Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Phil. Um, I'm doing this update because uh, I'm having a little mini tank crash and I haven't done a video in a while so I figured I will show you the bad. So about a month ago I started noticing that um, I was losing polyp extension and a lot of my color was slowly fading out. So you know I did the normal things, checked all the magnets, checked for stray voltage, checked all my water parameters, everything's been stable, no, no big fluctuations. Um, we did have a heat wave and a big fire here in California. There's a lot of smoke. My skimmer line does run outside, but um, as soon as I smelled the smoke, I disconnected the skimmer line. And uh, so just, I don't know if that was the cause or not. I don't think so, but it's just something to mention. Um, so what I wound up doing is, I sent off an ICP test to ATI and uh, it came back and my iodine, I think in the ATI um, test it's supposed to be around 60 micro whatever it is and mine was like 860. Now I have no idea on how my iodine got so high. I do dose, I've dosed Lugals on this tank for a couple years now and it's four drops weekly. And the only thing I can think of is one morning, I usually feed 30 minutes to an hour before the lights go out. And the only thing I could think of is maybe I grab the Lugals instead of the Coral Amino. But I don't know, I just can't, I can't believe that because even the little bulb on the pipette thing feels different. And I'm sure I would have noticed. But that's all I could think of. So anyway, so when I got the results, I decided I was going to do four or five 20% water changes just to dilute the iodine. And then I found out about a product called Brightwell Erase CL. It's supposed to bind up any iodine. And um, so I did dose that to the tank. And then yesterday I decided to do one more water change. And after the water change, everything went to hell. The first thing I noticed was the Walt Disney right here. The flesh was peeling off. The tank went cloudy. Um, I got another Walt Disney up here that's gone. Another um, tenuous back there that's gone. This morning I got up. I had a big uh, upscale Zacro about the same size as this one. Completely gone. This guy was yellow with red polyps. Gone. Sunset Millie. It, uh, it still has polyps, but it lost all its color. Cherry Bomb still looks pretty good. It's still got polyp extension, but you can see where I took a big hunk out of it to try and save it. So LPS and uh, Softy still like they're doing okay, except for my NYX torch. It's been closed for a couple days. The green torch is still flapping in the wind. But that's what I'm working with, guys. There's another Disney gone. This uh, Cali Tort losing all its color. All of the corals are pretty much losing all their cor color. So that's what I'm dealing with, guys. I'm, uh, I did back up everything the best that I could. I took frags off. I'll walk you into the frag room. I did, um, I did mix up a couple different batches of Brightwell Neil Marine. And to double check to make sure that wasn't the iodine source and it came back normal so it wasn't the salt but here's what I fragged off this morning just trying to save what I could so I don't have to completely start over from scratch but I hope I got them in time time will tell we will see I do have quite a few things in here backed up so I won't be starting over from scratch which is a good thing but still a bummer nonetheless so, um, the one thing that um, I've mentioned it a few times in my videos is I've been fighting acro-eating flatworms in this tank for about eight months. I've been using uh, KZ's Flatworm Stop, and I think I'm on my third or fourth um, thousand mil bottle of that. And it seemed, I mean, the corals were still growing. I would get damage here and there, and I've been working on mounting everything like to its own rock. That way I could easily remove them and dip them. 
So I've been doing some dipping routines on them and you know, I still see some here and there, but uh, definitely not as bad as they were, but eight months is long enough. I want to get rid of them once and for all because I know that my growth and color and everything would be much better if these acroiding flatworms weren't in the tank. So now that things are going, I'm just trying to come up with a way where I can remove all these acros and then just make sure the worms are gone once and for all. I don't know. I wish I had more money because I would sell these pinball machines and just put a big giant tank on this wall right here. That would be ideal. But I don't know if that's in the cards right now. I'm still something I'm contemplating. But that's um, what's going on with the reef, guys. It's a... Uh, not a happy, nice update, but it's reality, and what can you do? So anyway, I don't want to keep boring you with all my grief, but um, it is a bad day, and I just wanted to share with you what's happening on the 525XL. So hopefully I will see you guys soon with better news and better days. Take care. We'll talk to you on the next video. See ya.